Am I the asshole for sending the police after my ex-brother-in-law after a heirloom got lost? Disclaimer, this is not my story. My ex-husband and I had a son who is now 11 years old. Four years ago, we divorced and he moved into the house of his aging dad. Last year, my ex died of a sudden stroke. Our marriage ended on good terms, so at the funeral, my ex-father-in-law offered for us to come over and look through my ex's stuff to see if we wanted anything. He also said that we could take our time as it's not going anywhere. It took us about six weeks to gather our strength, only to realize that most of his stuff was already gone. We asked my ex-father-in-law about it, who was just as surprised as us. He explained that my ex's brother was there a couple of times to check on the house and occasionally get some documents. After a lot of pressing, my ex-brother-in-law admitted that he sold or threw away most of the things to prepare the house to be rented out. My son and I were very heartbroken. My ex-father-in-law was too, but took this as a sign to add something to his will. Am I the asshole for sending the police after my ex-brother-in-law after a heirloom got lost? Disclaimer, this is not my story. My ex-father-in-law took this as a sign to add something to his will. He has a collection of historical artifacts, books, and other things that was his biggest pride. So he put in his will that my son is to inherit it. Two weeks ago, he passed away. We waited until after the funeral before we went over to get the collection. My ex-brother-in-law told us he was in a hurry at the moment and we should come back later. The next day, he told us that he couldn't find it. He said it must have been lost or the old man got rid of it. As soon as I was back home, I called the cops and told them the story and made sure to stress my ex-brother-in-law's suspicion that it might have been stolen. Yesterday, I received a call from my ex-brother-in-law that the police were at his home. I told him I might have needed to call the cops again because there were things in the collection that would have needed to be registered. He dropped the collection off an hour later at our house after suddenly finding it. I heard that some people think I'm greedy as others think my ex-brother-in-law was greedy. I think we'll be moving away because we have no family left here. Am I the asshole for telling my fiancé that he embarrassed me when he started singing happy birthday to his five-year-old son at a restaurant? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I, 30 female, have been with my fiancé, Ned, male 36, for a year and a half. He has a five-year-old son with his ex-girlfriend. They don't have a custody arrangement, but he has him most of the week because his mom is currently sick. His son is lovely, but I noticed that Ned takes him everywhere he goes, including places that aren't child-friendly, and we have an issue with that now, but we're working on it. His son's fifth birthday was days ago. Ned took us out to a restaurant to celebrate. The place was nice and looked a bit unfitting for the occasion because it was a somewhat expensive place. Anyways, we ordered food and got the birthday cake, which was a surprise to me because I thought we were going to celebrate at home so we could be free to sing and play however we wanted. I still had no issue with that until Ned started singing the happy birthday song to his son. I was so stunned I almost dropped my plate. He was singing it at the top of his lungs, not even looking around or paying attention to people staring at us. Am I the asshole for telling my fiancé that he embarrassed me when he started singing happy birthday to his five-year-old son at a restaurant? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I felt so embarrassed I kept whispering for him to stop, but he ignored me. I expected anyone in the staff to get involved and stop him, but no one did. In fact, a woman came up to us and offered to take a video. He looked at me later, asking what was wrong. I said thanks for finally noticing he didn't understand what I meant and I didn't explain until we got in the car. I told him that he embarrassed me the second he started singing in the restaurant. He said he didn't get why I would be embarrassed by him celebrating his son's birthday and cheering him up. I told him we could have done that at home where we would be more comfortable and free. He took it as in I was ashamed of him and his son, but I denied it and said that it just felt awkward and embarrassing because I've never been in that situation in the restaurant we were at. He said his son's mom is sick and he's trying to do all he can to cheer him up and that all families do that and no one had an issue with it except me. I tried to explain, but he said he didn't feel like talking. We haven't been speaking since then. Story time. My boyfriend cheated on me with the girl best friend. So a little background information, I was 17 and a junior in high school, and my boyfriend and I had been dating for a year. But just a little backstory about when we got together. So there were definitely some red flags that I missed, okay? One of them being that he had a girl best friend. And I don't care what y'all have to say if that makes me insecure or what, but coming from someone who has been the girl best friend, I knew this was not good at all. Especially whenever we first started dating and she was still being super friendly with him. Meaning she would hold his hand, she would hang on him 24-7. And when I told him I was super uncomfortable with that and I felt like there needed to be some boundaries. He was like, um, yeah, I told you what it was whenever we got together. So if you don't like that, then just break up with me. Looking back on it now, that was also a red flag because I feel like he was telling me to break up with him so that way he didn't have to break up with me, like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend cheated on me with the girl best friend. 
So like I said, she would still hang all over him and he pretty much told me, if you don't like that, then you can leave. Obviously, I did not want to leave because I liked him and he was my boyfriend. So I just kept putting up with it and eventually, you know, we got six months into our relationship. So at that point, I'm thinking maybe I have a little bit more authority, you know, to be like, hey, I don't like the way that she acts around you. You guys can't hang out like that anymore. And they would hang out alone together. He would take her to dinner. Which I literally tried telling him that the stuff that they do together is related relationship stuff and he was like that's not true at all because we did all this stuff before you and I even got together so anyways like I said six months in I'm like hey I don't like the way that you guys are hanging around each other once again he gives me the same excuse so he pretty much said that he didn't care and the one night him and I were supposed to hang out but he canceled on me last minute and her and I didn't get along and she never snapchatted me before but then I get a snapchat of her and him making out at his house I know big sisters are great, but mine is pure evil. She just hates me for no reason at all. Growing up, she kicked, pushed, and beat me whenever our parents were out of the house. Called me ugly, warned me to stay away from her, and she even became best friends with my bully. As a child, I didn't understand why she hated me so much. When I turned thin, I gathered courage and asked her why she hated me so much. And she told me she wished I was never born. She said nobody loves me and nobody will ever love me. She said I meant nothing to her and she wished I would just die. At that age, hearing this from my big sister crushed me entirely i did everything in my power to get her to like me but nothing worked my mom and my dad died in a car accident when i turned 15 my big sister was 22 at the time things got to worse after my parents died the house we were living in belonged to my parents and since she was above 18 she became my legal guardian my big sister insulted and cursed at me every chance she got she said it was my fault my parents died she called me a witch she told me nothing good will ever come my way. She stopped feeding me and she intentionally cut off the water and electricity in the house. I knew my dad had left some money behind for both of us. But whenever I asked her for food or money for basic things I need, she told me to fuck off. I couldn't take the hunger anymore so I started begging the next door neighbor for food. She also died two months later and my big sister said it was my fault. She said anyone who gets too close to me will die. I couldn't take it anymore. I knew my dad had a sister in another part of the country. She was not at my parents funeral and I didn't didn't even know how she looked like but i decided to go look for her and stay with her i packed a few of my clothes begged for money on the street for transportation to her place when i finally got there she didn't want me there she was poor and she was living in a kiosk she sold food in a small container in front of her house she said she doesn't have enough to take care of both of us i begged her to allow me to stay with her for a few days she agreed but after a few days she took me back to my sister when we got there my sister had already rented out my room and my parents room and i had only left her for five days she said there was nothing she could do about the rooms if i wanted to stay then i had to sleep in the kitchen she tried talking to my sister but she was very rude after she saw my situation at home my auntie agreed to let me come stay with her so i moved in with my auntie and i didn't hear from my big sister again for years i went through a lot but i will always be grateful for my auntie for doing the best she could for me and i know taking care of me was a very big challenge for her i worked more than two jobs whilst i went to school now long story short it was very difficult but i made it i have a good job that pays very well my auntie and i are staying together at a better place and she's not working in anymore because i can take care of her now so i received a call from a hospital last week in the city my big sister is there and she's terminally ill she needs a kidney transplant or she might die in a few weeks time she had listed me as her only living relative she has been in the hospital for months and nothing was working i cut the call immediately i told my auntie about my big sister's condition and she begged and begged me to go visit her she said i might regret it later on if i don't i finally agreed to go only for me to get there for her to beg me to give her one of my kidneys she didn't even beg for my forgiveness my dear asshole for telling my niece her dog is not comparable to my child i lost my 15 year old daughter in a car accident last year i haven't been able to clean her room or go in it and my husband doesn't either i don't go anywhere except work anymore and while i'm in therapy it isn't helping much now my niece is 17 and has always been very empathetic to animals but not to people her dog passed two years ago and she was torn up for months well last week she came to stay with us and my husband made her a bed on the couch she asked why she couldn't sleep in my daughter's room, being that she thought it was the new guest room. Am I the asshole for telling my niece her dog is not comparable to my child? I explained that we haven't been able to change anything yet, and she rolled her eyes and said it was a year ago. She said we need to move on, and when I started crying, she tried to apologize. I think in an attempt to relate, she said she had taken the loss of her dog very hard, but got over it within a year. I screamed that my child wasn't a dog. My husband came in to moderate and ended up telling my niece to go home. He called an Uber for her and I haven't spoken to her since. 
but my sister reached out and said that I was being unreasonable and made my niece feel like a monster. I didn't mean to upset her, but I felt that was completely out of line.